Hey guys, my name is Sammy. Welcome to my channel if you're new. And if you're not new, welcome back. Thank you. Just before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you're notified of new videos. It's March Madness. Each day I do a different mat exercise in Joe Pilates' original order. This is very classical. I suggest you get this book, Return to Life, because he has pictures and he goes over each exercise so you really know the setup, the action, and how to do the exercise. The reason that I'm going through it is that it can be a little bit confusing, so it's best for you to follow along with your own book. And the link is in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything extra to buy from that link, but it does help me out a lot, so I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so today is day eight, and it's National Women's Day, so shout out to all the amazing women out there. And you get to celebrate today. Well, you get to celebrate however you want, but we get to celebrate March Madness today on National Women's Day with the spine stretch or how I learned it, the spine stretch forward. He has his pictures here, just like he does in all the exercises. And let's go over it. So pose one, take position illustrated. Spread legs as wide apart as possible. Keep in mind that his legs are not turned out. His knees are and toes are facing the ceiling. So he is parallel. So as wide as is possible, staying parallel. And then draw toes pointed upward and backward. So it's a flex position. So his first position, he's sitting just like this and this way. Also, just a little side note, please don't get intimidated by my mat or my equipment. All you need is a mat on the floor. Moving on, pose two, he says, rest palms flat on mat or floor, then with outstretched arms, palms flat on mat or floor. So he starts here and then he moves them to here. So he really likes to set himself up engaged and then start moving, making sure the posture is there. So if he were to start with his hands in between his legs, there might be a slouch that comes in. So find that good upright position and then move your hands. That's the point of that. That's the point of that, I think. Now, chin touching chest, and I said this in uh, yesterday's video of the double leg stretch, you want your chin higher up on your chest. So if you go this way and you're trying to get it low on your chest, then your chest collapse, collapses. So you also want to lift your chest to your chin and try to get it higher up. Yeah, it's okay if you have 50 chins, it's doing great things for your neck. Then... Begin reaching forward with three successive sliding, he put it in quotes, motion stretching movements as far forward as possible until you assume position as illustrated in pose three and four. So he's stretching that spine all the way forward as much as he can, but his pelvis did not move. So he's not shifting weight towards his pubic bone, he's staying back on his sits bones. So that's important because a lot of times, especially if you're super flexible or if you do a lot of yoga, you'll flatten out your spine and fold forward to stretch the legs. We're stretching the spine here. So we want, a not, we want a nice long curve of the spine versus flattening out and stretching the legs. We're not stretching the legs here, different exercise. There's a note, it says, repeat the foregoing exercise three times, trying with each repetition to reach farther and farther forward as indicated. So there's only three of them. If you've been watching the videos, there's some exercises that there's not that many of. And the reason is it's really setting you up for the next exercise. You wanna be able to, you know when hair feels like a spider web? You wanna be able to get through as much of the mat order as you can. You don't have to spend a long time, but you gotta move your spine in all directions. So this is not the only time we're gonna stretch the spine. Anyways, let's move on. Cautions, pose four, continue exhaling slowly. Abdomen drawn in, chin pressed firmly against chest. So. I see a lot, and I'm probably guilty of it too, as people slide forward, their chin starts to lift. So the chin stays not just touching the chest, but actually pressing into the chest. You're not sinking your chest again. Your chest is also lifting. So there's always that oppositional pull. Either it's going in two opposite directions to stretch or 
they're pulling towards each other. Well, let's do it. So he sits like this. Now, if you're on the floor, you can be on a yoga mat or whatever, you can probably go wider. I am gonna go just as wide as my mat and you want your knees and toes upward and backwards and then you're anchoring that pelvis down. So you wanna make sure you're not sitting too far forward. A good way to figure out where your sits bones are actually is to place your hand under your butt and feel the bony part of your butt. So picture them as upside down triangles in your hands and now roll back behind it and then roll in front of it. Back behind and in front. So you'll see when you're too far forward and when you're too far back. Now find where those upside down triangles are prominent in your hands and then slide your hands out and that is where you should be sitting. Draw in and up, lift tall, and then bring your hands in between you. Now, inhale, chin onto the chest. Exhale, slide forward three, two, one. That's your exhale. And then you're gonna come back. Inhale, sit up tall. Try to find that draw in and up. Chin on the chest, inhale. Exhale, three, two, one. Pull back. You can even press your hands down and pull that stomach back. And then come up. Inhale and then exhale. Go a little farther, farther, farther. Press your hands down. Pull your stomach in. Chin on chest. And come all the way back up. Okay, so modifications. One, I want to make note if you're knock kneed and that's like when your legs are straight and you have one knee knocking in front of the other, then it doesn't always feel good on your hip flexors to sit this way. So if you're on the floor, get something to prop, stack some books, sit, sit yourself up a little higher so you're at a different angle. You can grab a yoga block. These are not expensive on Amazon and they are also in the description link but you can sit on top of something this way and you might just bring your fingertips down and then go and make sure you're still pulling back and then pressing down. You can also have your knees bent a little bit and come back up, especially if you're really tight in the backs of your legs. This is also a good option because you don't want to be sitting so far back. You want to try and sit upright as much as possible. So you need to do whatever you need to do to do the exercise to the best of your ability. So tight legs, knock knees, sit yourself up. You can do it sitting in a chair. So this is kind of high, but you have your legs, you know, out in front of you at an angle as well. And what's nice about a chair with a back, if you can imagine it, is that as you go forward, now this time your hands will be in the air and I'm gonna show you that version as well. But as you go forward, you can pull your back into the chair and peel your upper body off. And that's nice because it gives you feedback. You can do that against a wall also. So the way that I learned it was hands out in front of you, like you're on a shelf. And this is what you would do in a chair as well. It's not long enough for you to touch the floor. You're too high up and the chair seat doesn't go long enough. So you'd sit up tall, pull that in, lift, inhale, chin on the chest, exhale, go forward. and then come back up, inhale. So that way works quite a bit of strength and control because you don't have the mat for support or to pull back into. So you can try both ways, play around with it. I will link my wall video up here somewhere. I think it's on this side. And there's good spine stretch forward in that where you're up against the wall and getting feedback. Again, you can prop a yoga block against that wall and sit on that and still pull into the, into the wall. So those are good ideas on how to feel that two-way stretch again. So as you're going forward, your stomach's pulling back and there's always that oppositional pull and stretch. And so whatever you can do to try and find that oppositional pull, the better so that you, when you don't have anything, your arms are in the air, you're traveling, all you have is a chair, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing and feeling, okay? So that is day eight of March Madness on National Women's Day. And go kick some butt with your Matt Pilates. Bye.